Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Big Shot Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Saturday, February 3rd, 2024. If you like what we see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my college basketball bank shop best bet, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Saturday's loaded card in college basketball. First up, we see UConn and St. John's. This one's going to be a 12 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on Fox. Now, St. John's, while their record may not be the best, and they are you know, slumping right now, they've lost four of their last five games, I think St. John's has proven that it's going to compete this season in conference play, and it's not a team that a lot of teams want to face in the conference tournament later on this season. I mean, yes, St. John's, they've lost four of the last five games, but in the mix you know, of those five games, they lost a one-point contest at Creighton and a one-point contest against Marquette, two of the better teams, not just in the conference, but in the country. So St. John's has been competitive in conference play. They have the win against Xavier and Butler and Nova and Providence. They were competitive in the first matchup against UConn at UConn, the first game at December 23rd, 69-65, to the final score. St. John's was catching double digits in that one, so they covered the number with ease. And that was a game where St. John's didn't even shoot the ball well. I mean, they were 22% from three, 47% from two-point range. And the, the big reason why they were able to cover the number was they got to the free-throw line 28 times. They forced more turnovers. They were competitive on the glass. And I think we see similar things in this spot, especially in a much more beneficial place to play. And, you know, Madison Square Garden, we should see a lot of fans from both teams, but it's going to be a lot easier for St. John's than playing at UConn in, you know, in, in UConn's gym. I think UConn, you know, great team, obviously. Nine-game win streak. They've run the table since they lost their first game of conference play against Seton Hall. But I do think the defense is a bit overvalued. I think the shot quality numbers aren't the best there. They take a lot of fouls. And like I said, 28 free throws in that first game for St. John's in the season series. They're not the best defensive rebounding team. They don't really force a lot of turnovers. And their you know, three-point defense is ranked outside the top 100 in the country, while St. John's top 100 in both two-point and three-point defense. You know, UConn's a great offensive rebounding team, but so is St. John's. I think we see these teams compete yet again on the glass. I just think this is going to be a really competitive game, and I think because of the recent performances, UConn's nine-game win streak, St. John's losing four or five, we're getting an excellent price with the home team. So give me St. John's in this one plus the points. I wouldn't be shocked to see him earn the outright upset. Next up, we see Texas and TCU. This one, 2 p.m. Eastern, is going to be on ESPN2. You know, Texas played in a really tough game against Houston last time out. Lost that one in overtime, 76-72. to So they were able to cover the number, but they were looking for the outright W against one of the best teams in college basketball. Get that huge upset win and couldn't get it. And I, I do, you know, we talk a lot about letdown spots after teams win a huge game, an emotional game, rivalry game. But even, you know, after a loss like that, it could be really tough to bounce back, especially when you go out on the road in a tough building in TCU. This is one of the best home court advantages in college basketball. Uh, TCU's played a lot of home games this year. They only have one home loss, and that was a one-point loss against Iowa State. And if you've watched the Bank Shop Breakdown from the beginning of the season, you know my opinions on Iowa State. I think one of the, they're one of the best teams in, in college hoops this year. So TCU, really tough team, really tough place to play. They're in great form, three-game win streak, covered in the last game against Texas Tech. A, a seven-point win in that one, obviously covered against Baylor with the win in triple overtime. Uh, and to me, I, I just think TCU is the better team, more balanced team. I think they have a big advantage on the glass in this one, as Texas, not a great rebounding team, 200th in a, a defensive rebounding percentage. TCU, a top 20 offensive rebounding team. So even if the shots aren't falling, TCU, the Horned Frogs, should be able to get those second-chance looks. I just think it's too much for Texas in this one. I, I have mentioned I think the Longhorns are a bit overrated this year. I will say they're improving as the season goes along, but I think TCU is the better team here. So give me TCU. I'm going to lay the points. Next up, we see Florida and Texas A&M. This one's going to be a 4 p.m. Eastern start time on ESPN2. You know, we took the points with Florida in its last game against Kentucky as our bank shot best bet. Not only did the Gators win that, or not only did they cover the game, but they also won the game outright 94-91 in overtime and that makes it back-to-back -back overtime wins for florida they're on a four-game win streak but back-to-back -back overtime wins that's not a you know a great spot to be in on the road now against texas a&m after you know another emotional victory for the gators this is a clear letdown spot after that big upset win and i i think both of these teams are really underrated especially offensively but i, I just think the spot here really benefits the aggies at home i mean Florida has to go on the road for their second straight true road game. Texas A&M has a huge rest advantage because their last game was last Saturday against Ole Miss at home. So they've been home the whole week preparing for this matchup while Florida just had to play Kentucky. You know, it's not easy playing Kentucky, preparing for Kentucky. 
And, you know, while the Gators offense was elite in that game, I still have my worries about the defense. I mean, Kentucky, through the first 40 minutes, they were able to score basically at will. The Kentucky offense struggled in overtime, but, uh, you know, Florida's defense, I didn't think was very sustainable in that game. And I think going forward, I still have my concerns with the Gators defensively. They ranked 93rd in adjusted defensive efficiency. They don't force many turnovers. They're struggling on the defensive glass now, which is not what you want to see. And Texas A&M, while their shooting numbers aren't the best, they create really good shots. They're a strong offensive rebounding team. They get to the free throw line, and they take care of the basketball. And I think we're going to see those shooting numbers improve as the season goes along. I think the Aggies offense is one to watch out for as we continue SEC play. And I think there's value right now with Texas A&M in this spot. So give me the Aggies in this one. I'm going to lay the points. A clear letdown spot for the Gators. Next up, we see Duke in North Carolina. This one's going to be a 6.30 Eastern start time. It's going to be on ESPN. Always one of the best matchups, you know, biggest rivalries to watch in college basketball. And it's especially, you know, it's always a fun series to watch, but especially when these teams are both good. Both teams top 10 in college in the AP polls right now. And, uh, you know, should be a great matchup here. When you look at both of these teams' recent form, you know, Duke's on a three-game win streak. North Carolina was on a giant win streak, but they lost their last game against Georgia Tech on the road, 74-73. to you know, that was certainly a big upset loss there, but I think the Tar Heels bounced back from that one. I think they're the much better team here, and at home, with the home court advantage, you know, returning home from the loss, playing your rival, I think it's a really good spot for North Carolina. I think they're the more balanced team. I trust them going forward in, in terms of a long-term perspective, and you know, I watched that game with Duke and Virginia Tech last time out, and that was a game where we laid the points with Duke uh, as our bank shot best bet and on the bank shot breakdown as well. And, you know, they won that game to cover for us as well, and they were up by about six to ten points for most of that game. But what I was really concerned with was Duke's defense from uh, against two point shots against Virginia Tech. You know, Virginia Tech, a very I would say perimeter heavy or you know a three point reliant team where they got guys like Sean Pajula and Hunter, Hunter Couture that you know, make a good amount of three pointers, but. Uh, Virginia Tech did not shoot too well from three in that game. They were only around 27% from three. They were scoring a lot of their buckets from two-point range inside the paint as well. And that concerned me that Duke's defense was struggling so much, giving up 56% from two-point range. It's way higher than their season average. And now going on the road against a North Carolina team has got a stretch, such a strong front court. You got, obviously, R.J. Davis, one of the best players in college basketball in the, in the backcourt, but Armando Baycott and Harrison Ingram in the front court for North Carolina could be really dangerous in this ballgame. And I just don't think Duke's going to have the answers defensively. And also, you know, while Duke's a great three-point shooting team, we can't expect this team to go out on the road and shoot 53% from three each game like we saw against the Hokies. I, I just think Duke is an unsustainable style of basketball right now, playing an unsustainable style of basketball. And on the road against North Carolina, not really a good, a good spot for that. So I'm going to go to North Carolina. And this one, like I said, it should be a great game. But I like the Tar Heels to bounce back here. And finally, we see St. Mary's and Gonzaga. This one, 1030 Eastern, is going to be on ESPN. Another great rivalry game in college basketball. So many of those on Saturday in college hoops. And you know, St. Mary's has not fared too well at Gonzaga in recent years. Their last win at Gonzaga, I believe, was right around 2018. Uh, but they've done, they've done some damage against Gonzaga at home. And I, I think this is always a competitive series to watch. St. Mary's, they've just been dominant in conference play. You don't want to overreact to some of their wins against some of the weaker teams in the conference. And that's what you get in the West Coast play. You know, some really solid teams like San Francisco, Gonzaga, and, and uh, St. Mary's. But also Pacific, Portland, San Diego, three teams that, you know, would struggle in most conferences in college basketball. But I think St. Mary's still defense travels. I mean, this is a top 15 adjusted defensive efficiency team. They're super strong on the glass, both offensively and defensively. This is a Gonzaga team that usually has an advantage on the glass against its opponents, but not in this game. St. Mary's is the better rebounding team. Gonzaga's in good form themselves. They've won five straight games. They're ranked 19th in Kempom. But I do think, I just personally believe this is one of the weaker teams, weaker Gonzaga teams we've seen in the last decade plus. I think that this is a good spot for St. Mary's to at least cover the number, if not win the out, the win outright. I mean, St. Mary's, I thought, was underrated in non-conference play. I thought they were unfortunate in a few of those neutral site games, especially in non-conference play. And I still think they're underrated now. This defense is the real deal. I think the offense is underrated. I think St. Mary's competes in this one. I'm going to take St. Mary's plus the point. should be a great game. I look for the Gales to win the game outright. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in College Hoops. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.